Now, I'm going to show you this fly here. This is a, the hedgehog. Oops, I lost it there. And basically tied, standard, nothing special other than the wing uh, is dyed, but the rest is natural double with a wee bit of flash in it. Uh, when I was a fishery manager, and I was for 14 bit years, uh, I had to make sure that we had flies that were working and ready for the customers when they came to fish. And I would say the hedgehog was one of the on the top of the list. Now, as you can see, this much the same fly. The only difference is this is the kind of half muddler head version, uh, whereas this is just a dubbed in front, which is the standard. Uh, nothing wrong with it. it. Works extremely well. You can also add legs onto it if you wish. Um, I can show you how you do that too. But I'll show you the winging method. It was. When you when you work at a trout fishery, you don't have a lot of time to yourself. You're always people coming and going, and they're always looking for flies. So you're trying to um, make sure there's flies in the, ready for them. So, and this is a, a quick way of tying up the hedgehog. Now the hook I'm using this, this is my, was my, one of my favourite hooks. Uh, whether it be in black nickel or bronze, uh, would be the the short shank special. This is a size ten. Now the shank's equivalent to a 12, but the gate is equivalent to a size 10, so it's ideal for sort of deer hair patterns. Patterns like that, where fish really splash at them at some times, but they, they keep going. Uh, great fun. Now, the thread I'm going to be using, just a normal uni thread, AO in black. Important that you wax your thread, just to give you plenty of grip, especially with tying in deer hair. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is put a layer of thread down the shank. And then basically move the waste piece and we're going to come back up two thirds of the way leave about a third of the shank so right there tie in just two bunches of deer here now I'm going to use a cinnamon dyed to dye this as cinnamon it's a row deer it's a darker patch cinnamon ginger great colours these are colours I use or you can use natural which is can't go far wrong with, with, with natural. Now, we want a good bunch of deer hair here. Trim it away from the skin and then open out these fibres, the cut end fibres, and remove any broken ends or any fine fluff. Now, I'm going to stack it. Let's put it into the stacker just roughly. It's just bring the ends together a wee bit better. Now, when you remove it from the stacker, remove it the way you're going to tie it in. So, that's the way you tie it forward of the eye. Length you're looking, length of the hook, tied forward. Keep the deer, deer hair on top, then we have two loose turns and slowly bring the thread turn or tighten with these with the two turns and add in a couple more or so. Then I'm going to wind over the cut ends. Now don't let these go, just encourage the good the tapered tips towards the front and then make sure these are tied in. Now I'm going to tear these away as I wind. At this point, just keep winding down, tying the, the deer hair in. It will tear, but if you do this, what will happen? It will taper. So you do put a lot of pressure on. Now, some deer hair even tear much quicker than that. And there we go. Now, you have the odd broken end there you've missed, so it's quite easy to just to come in and pinch these out. Individual fibres. Now, as you see, you can get a nice taper if you do it that way. You can just trim it away if you if you don't like tearing at it. Um, I've just got used to doing it. I'm just making sure it's tied in here. And you see the taper you get, and that's that's what I like to see that nice taper. Now, the dubbing I'm going to be using it's a blend of my own. It's just basically it's a if you look, the equivalent would be the hair's ear mask mixed with a bit of gold light bright. Quite like this one, but um, depends on the time of year. But anyway, it's a nice blend. It mixes easy. Just use the the blender, the coffee grinder I use actually. So dub that onto your thread. Slide up. I'm going to do a couple of turns or so just to start it off. That's fine. And then I'm going to bring back. 
this is going to basically form the wing. So two or three, two or three turns to hold that. Take away the thread. Uh, sorry, the dubbin, and just use the pair thread itself. And we drop more. Two or three more, two turns more, and then it will taper as it goes as well. And work your way up. Now there's going to be, if you look, it's equivalent to four bunches there. It's important that you do wind some of the thread through it to tighten it up. I say I did this just to speed up the time process. Now this last bunch here or so, what I'm just going to do is pull it back, making sure it's in the right area. I want it on top. I'm going to use the dubbing and the thread just to make sure it's held back. I'm going to get some more dubbing. Down front. You see you have plenty of room here to tie in another bunch of deer here. Now before I do anything I'm just going to bring out some of the, the dubbing into the deer here. Now out of one bunch you've got a nice wing there for the hedgehog. Now as I say I'm going to put legs in just to show you. Now, I've got some pre-knotted pheasant tail legs. I'm only going to put two down either side. So just bring them 90 degrees from the feather and tie them in either side of the wing and slightly longer obviously so you can you can see them two or three turns to hold move the waist tidy that area up should be a wee bit of wax on my thread see how the legs are sitting now these are extras obviously but I'm probably I'm tying the fly as well showing you now I'm going to go back to my deer here it's my second bunch as they say. Now you could be you tie in a, like a like a half mother type head just on top. Or in this case I'm just gonna put dubbing to finish it off. So there's the, the length to tape on towards the back, hold that in your finger and thumb. And then come over, catch in. And just work your thread through these cut ends. And there we are. And then what we do is finish off with some more of the dubbing. Or even if you want it, you could put a hackle in front, but this is the hedgehog, so. Nice bit of dubbing. Just again, winding the thread through it slightly. If we get to the eye, I'm just going to draw back some of the dubbing. It's a wee touch too much there. You lump there, I don't like, so go back if you're not happy. It's fine. Again, as I said, just draw back anything going forward of the eye. Using your fingers like a fine ve velcro, as they say. Turns in front to lock them back. Save a bit of time. Again, a wee bit of varnish on the thread. But finish. And there we are. And that's like a quick way of tying the hedgehog. Looks okay. Any long fibers to step my way. Spoon me fiber here I don't like. We can trim this out. So anyway, simple, simple fly, excellent fly. Um the Otney boys will like, like this sort of style, I like this fly, and I'm, I'm sure they'll be happy that I'm calling it the hedgehog, and not something else. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Mm -hmm.